just how is Babylon related to the abomination of desolation which we find in prophecy? This is part 138 of the Revelation study. We've been working through the book of Revelation. We're currently in Revelation 17 and 18, which is all about Babylon. Babylon, that confused false Christian church, which includes all type of parachurches and faith-based organizations. But we're going to look today at the abominations of Babylon. And we know in prophecy there's this thing called the abomination of desolation. So we're going to look at those together and see how they relate. And we're going to do that by comparing Scripture with Scripture. Jesus' words are spirit and life. We are commanded to compare spiritual with spiritual. We know that Babylon is a mystery, a mystery, something that's hidden. But the angel, the angel in Revelation will tell us the mystery of the woman. And we, by comparing Scripture with Scripture, we can understand what these things mean. To us it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but to them that are outside, it's in parables. The world doesn't care about this, but we want to look at the Bible and understand what these things mean. In the description section of this video, I've placed some links to things that we've studied already on Babylon and the Babylonian captivity, Great Tribulation, uh, and also some links to our website for more detailed study of, of verses on this topic about Babylon. So please consider looking at the description section and using those links for further study. Okay, just a quick review of Babylon. We've seen that Babylon, the same Hebrew word as Babel, was the first kingdom. We recall the Babylonian captivity of Judah in the Old Testament, which was a type of the Great Tribulation. In Revelation 17 and 18, Babylon has always existed, but Revelation 17 and 18 point to that time of the Great Tribulation. And we know that because she's on the scarlet beast that was, is not, yet is. And the is not and yet is refers to the end time. The yet is, that's the period of time that we're just about to enter. The seventh head is the seventh king is to come, which is the Antichrist. It exists just before Judgment Day. It's the context of Revelation 17 to 19. And Babylon is the false Christian church that exists of all time. But in particular, in the Great Tribulation, it includes all type of parachurches, denominations, independent churches, etc. It includes saved and unsaved people, but we still hear the voice of the bridegroom and the bride and the light of the candle still there. But it, they're, the people there, the Christians there, are captured. Please consider subscribing to this channel. There's a little red button in the bottom right-hand corner. And let's move on in this study. Okay, so here are the key verses we need to look at to compare the abomination of desolation. We see in Revelation 17, 4 and 5, that the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and she had a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And we've looked in a previous video that that has to do with spiritual fornication, which is the worship of other gods and idols. That's what the false Christian church permits, and more than that, promotes. And upon her head was a name, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and abominations. So we see that word abomination twice in there. It's an abomination. Abomination is something that's hated. And we also see, and we looked at this in part 135, that at the end time, the ten horns make her desolate. That hour of judgment, the great tribulation on Babylon. It's a time that she becomes desolate. So she has abominations, but it makes desolate. Abomination and desolation, the same Greek root words as used in the very famous prophecy of the Olivet Discourse of Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. So we're going to look at that and see what the relationship is between Babylon and the abomination of desolation. Okay, so the key questions is, what is an abomination? We'll look at that. And again, how do Babylon's abominations and her being de become desolate relate to the abomination of desolation of the Great Tribulation? And they do relate very closely. Just to refresh Matthew 24, here's the passage that, that many people who follow prophecy know. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. The holy place is wherever God's people are. It's the church. In the end time, that church is known as Babylon. Then whoso reads, let him understand. 
Let them that are in Judea flee to the mountains. Come out of Babylon. For then shall be great, great tribulation, such as what was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor, no, nor ever shall be. It's a, the abomination of desolation is a feature of the great tribulation. What is an abomination in the Bible? An abomination, literally, it means a morally detestable or hated act, which is that which is sin. It occurs about 160 times. About 50 of these occurrences are in Ezekiel, describing the conditions of the Babylonian captivity, the conditions of sin within Jerusalem, and the worshiping of other gods and idols. And it, it's, it's, it, Babylonian captivity is a type of the Great Tribulation. Most occurrences of abomination in the Bible involve the worship and serving of other gods and idols, which of course includes sins of all types. Anything can become an, an other god or an idol. If, whatever is put in front of worship and, and serving God. Everything that's honored above or instead of God is an idol. Okay, so here's some examples of abominations in the Old Testament. We go all the way back all the way back to Deuteronomy, the graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire, false gods. You shall not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. Idolatry is a snare. It takes your time and attention from God. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God, the worshiping of idols. Deuteronomy 29, you have seen their abominations and their idols, wood and stone, silver and gold, which were among them. It's idolatry. It's putting something before knowing God or worshiping and serving God. Deuteronomy 32, they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods and with abominations provoked they him to anger. Even Israel, Israel was worshiping other gods and idols. So spiritual fornication that we find in Revelation 17 is an abomination because it's worshiping other gods and idols. It's the same thing having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and a filthiness of her fornication. Spiritual fornication is an abomination. It's something that's hated by God. It's, it's, it's detestable. And we looked at the spiritual fornication in the last video, part 137, and we saw it's worshiping other gods and idols. Fornication is also filthy. filthy. It, it's, it's unclean. It's the opposite of being holy. We see in 1 Thessalonians 4, 7, God has not called us to uncleanness, dirtiness, filthiness, but unto holiness, to be set apart from sin. Okay, so more examples of Israel's spiritual fornication. Israel, of course, Acts 7, 38, was the church in the wilderness. And we see in Leviticus 17, 7, they, referring to Israel, shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils or demons after whom they have gone a whoring, playing harlotry with, whoredom, spiritual whoredom, with, with demons and idols. Leviticus 20, then I will set my face against that man that goes to commit whoredom with Moloch. Moloch was a god of the Old Testament. It's worshiping something else instead of the true God, the Yahweh of the Old Testament, Jesus Christ. Remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them, and that you seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which you go a whoring. To, to seek after your own will, your own heart, your own eyes, the things that you want to do, the things that you see in this world, to love the world instead of God, that's spiritual harlotry. It's whoredom. Psalm 106, thus were they defiled with their own works and went a whoring with their own inventions. Sometimes people think, well, they're doing a good thing. They're coming up with their own ideas, their, their own works. But man's works become an idol. It's something that gets in front of worship in God. Okay, so just to, uh, let's do a review of the abomination of desolation. And on the next slide, I'll tag some of the pieces. We've done a series on that. But we, again, we see the passage in Matthew 24, which we've already read. When you see the abomination of desolation, for then shall be great tribulation. When that hated thing that causes desolation, that abomination, the worshiping of other gods and idols, would, that becomes a desolation. And when that's done in the church, it, the church becomes desolate because the church is confused. It becomes confusion or Babylon. And we see this, it refers to what was spoken of by Daniel the prophet. And that's where we see great clarity that it has to do 
with the man of sin, the, the final antichrist. Note Daniel 11. They shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. That's where God's people are. It's the holy place of Matthew 24. They shall take away the daily sacrifice, which is those daily things that Christians are supposed to do, which is worship God, study the word, pray, serve others. And they shall place the abomination that makes desolate, that abomination that makes desolate, which is the worship of other gods and idols. And such as do wickedly against the covenant show he corrupt by flatteries. This is talked about the king of the north, which is a type of the Antichrist. But the people who know their God should be strong and do exploits. So the king of the north in Daniel 11, they pollute the sacrifice by taking away the daily, the normal things Christians should do, and they place there the abomination that makes desolate. Okay, here are the videos, and I'll, I'll try to tag this slide with some of these videos, but the address is here. The key things on the abomination of desolation is that the daily is removed. The daily points to those things that Christians normally do. The abomination, which is the worship of other gods and idols, and that results in the desolation of the holy place or the desolation of where God's people are, which is the church, also known as confused Babylon. Okay, so summarizing what is the abomination of desolation, and I would encourage you to look at those other videos on the abomination of desolation, the daily removed are when things like Bible study, prayer, genuine Christian service in the, in, in the gospel, all that is diminished because every, all the focus is, is now on the abomination of desolation. The normal things that Christians should do is, is changed into the worship of Satan's kingdom. Antichrist is there. Idolatry is there. The worshiping of other gods and idols, the worldliness in the church, which we already see today all around us. And this results in desolation, which the church, the true Christians, are taken captive. They're scattered. They're spiritually killed because Babylon is confusion. It literally means confusion. And that's what we even see already today, that we see churches that are, they believe in all type of different things. They have different functions. There's all type of churches, parachurch ministries, denominations, independent churches, mega churches, all of that. It's become Babylon. As a reminder, the first two commandments, the first commandment says, you shall not have, have no other gods before me. It's the first commandment. Second commandment, you shall not make any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above and the earth beneath or is in water under the earth. You shall not bow thyself down to them nor serve them. And that's what may, those are the works of man's hands. And idols today don't look like graven images, but they come in the place of materialism, greed, the love of money, the love of the world. And the, that's what, that's what this, the Babylon and the abominations of Babylon and her fornication is all about. Okay, so we see also in the New Testament, idolatry as an abomination. You that say a man should not commit adultery, does thou commit adultery? You that abhor idols, do you commit sacrilege? Abhor is the same word as abomination. Idolatry, the, the worshiping of idols, is an abomination. And that word idolatry occurs 33 times in the New Testament. It mostly refers to actual objects of worship, but it also includes things like greediness, mortify your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, and which is idolatry. Covetousness, it's idolatry. Covetous, it, 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 it literally means greediness, to be greedy and love money and love possessions and the worldly things. Okay, we also see that idolatry very simply can be summed up into worship in Satan and his kingdom. Because all the things in this world are controlled by Satan. Satan is the god of this world, who has blinded the minds of them which believe not. We recall from Matthew 4 when Christ was tempted in the wilderness, that the devil uh, uh, took him up into an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said, all these things I will give thee. Satan was able to give all the kingdoms of the world to Christ if he would fall down and worship Satan. Of course, he didn't do that, but Satan is in control of the kingdoms of this world. It's very clear in the Bible. 1 John 2, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The world is of Satan. That's, that's Satan's domain. 
For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is controlled by Satan. Okay, so let's switch. So the abominations are those worshiping of other gods and idols. It's Satan's kingdom, ultimately. And that's what causes desolation. And we saw that in the Old Testament during the, the, the Babylonian captivity, which was a type of the Great Tribulation. Jeremiah 44, so that the Lord can no longer bear because of the evil of your doings and because of the abominations which you have committed. Therefore is your land a desolation, the abomination of desolation. It's the worshiping of other gods and idols in the church. It desolates the church. It scatters. It confuses. It, it, it causes all type of division. And an astonishment and a curse without an inhabitant as it is this day, that's where Babylon is headed. Is for complete destruction at the end day. Ezekiel 33, Then they shall know that I am the Lord when I have laid the land most desolate because of all their abominations which they have committed. That's what's going to happen with Babylon. As it moves forward, it makes the church more and more desolated. Okay, so now let's, let's swing back to Revelation 17. And we, we looked at this in part 135 two videos ago. But the ten horns which you saw upon, upon the beast, they shall hate the whore and make her desolate. They'll make her desolate. And the ten kings we saw in part 135 represent the fullness of the kingdoms of the world, which means worldliness. The world hates the, the, the whore, the harlot, Babylon, and it makes her desolate because the world is where the worship of other gods and idols come from. It's spiritual fornications. And we're going to do a whole video on this this judgment of the ten horns on Babylon. That'll be in an upcoming video. So you may want to subscribe to this channel so you keep up with these videos in Babylon. We're doing about 23 videos to really fully understand Babylon and her actions. Okay, so just a quick summary of the abomination of desolation. The abomination of desolation is the removal of the daily, the normal things Christians should be doing, which is prayer, Bible study, worshiping of God, Christian service, etc. And it's replaced with the abomination of desolation, which is ultimately Satan as his kingdom. It's worldliness. It's the worship of other gods and idols. It's in the holy place, which is the church. Babylon is that false Christian church, which includes all type of tentacles, faith-based organizations, parachurch, denominations, independent megachurches, etc. It promotes the abomination of desolation. The church becomes worldly. It's okay to become worldly is what the church is saying. Worldliness, again, it's Satan and his kingdom. It's spiritual fornication, which is an abomination. So it is related. The abomination is that worldliness that makes desolate, and that's what Babylon commits worldliness. It commits fornication with the whole earth. It's the promoter of the abomination of desolation. We're going to go on now in the next video, and we're going to look at Babylon, and she's called the mother of harlots. What does that mean? We're going to look at that in the next video. Please consider subscribing, and thank you very much for watching this video.